So my name is Thomas. What we do is we make smart gloves to make the worker in logistics and manufacturing more efficient. And I'm going to talk about two things today. First, I'm going to talk about what we are doing. So what is this thing doing? And second, I'm going to talk about how we do it. So how we as a, as a company, as a culture do it. Um, but I start with the what. And I always start with the team because the team is the most interesting part most of the times. We are part from IDEO. So IDEO is one of the biggest innovation consultancies in the world. Um, and we are part from BMW. BMW builds cars. Um, meaning in our culture, we have human-centered design meeting German engineering. And that's actually a cool mixture. Um, and we looked into manufacturing and logistics. Um, and there are two beautiful things about these markets. First, it's a huge market. There are 200 million people in the world actually um, working in manufacturing and logistics. It's the backbone of our material world. Um, as a startup, that's always a great place to start. Second, they only have one big need, and that's efficiency. They want to do stuff faster, or they want to do stuff in a higher quality. But they are thinking about efficiency day in and day out. Um, I know that, I'm German. If you think about wearables, um, there's one very interesting thing. You need to think about the form factor people are already used to. Um, so that's why glasses make sense, but you, if you look into a factory, you actually see one very interesting thing. Everyone is wearing gloves. So that's our basic idea. Let's make a smart glove that make them more efficient. Um, and that's ProGlove. And ProGlove is good for three things. It's about speed, quality, and information. Um, speed. At the moment, if you work in a BMW factory, um, at an assembly line, um, you build in parts. So you're taking a part, then you're taking um, a little scan pistol, scan the part, then you look at the screen, uh -huh, it's the right part. You bring back the pistol, then you build in the part. Um, we built the scanner into the glove. So now you just take the part, scan it, you build it in. Um, that saves you actually four seconds. But you have to scan per car around 1,000 times. In a normal factory like a BMW in Munich, um, you build 1,000 cars a day. So you have 1,000 times 1,000 times 4 seconds. And that's just a lot of money for BMW. Second thing is about quality. So we are really good in detecting are you grabbing the right tools and the right parts in the right order. So really giving the worker feedback if he makes an error. Um, at the moment, you, you find basically an error two hours later in quality control. We want to give you the feedback in the moment the error happens, so you can actually correct it. Um, so second thing is about quality. And third is about information. Um, if you think about logistics and you think about Amazon, for example, if you order basically a jeans and a t-shirt at Amazon, what somebody has to go through the warehouse and pick um, these items. What we can do is actually steps per pick. So for your jeans, he needed 100 steps. For your t-shirt, he needed 20 steps. Um, so you get your stuff. At the end of the day, Amazon realizes, OK, we are selling much more jeans than we are selling actually t-shirts. Um, but we need 100 steps per jeans, so much more than for a t-shirt. So we are rearranging our logistics warehouse. Um, because we have a new level of information, actually, that you can use to optimize your system. So that's what ProGlove does. Um, with this idea, we actually won um, a big competition in Silicon Valley. Um, the guy on the right, that's Brian. Brian is the CEO of Intel. Um, he likes us. Um, we won there $250,000 in a hole. Um, the other four guys are actually the four founders. Um, the guy in the middle, that's Paul. He looks a little crazy because he is a little crazy. Um, please remember him because we're, we're going to talk about him later. Um, actually, with this seed money, what we did the last one and a half years is basically talk to customers. Um, we made a lot of pilot projects. We raised um, a big two million uh, financing round. And we basically developed our product. And we are launching our product actually um, in the next two weeks. Just so you have a feeling of what the, the, the product will feel like, um, I brought you a little video so you, have a, you can imagine what we do. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that's basically what we do. Because Germany is a lot about industry, um, and we have kind of a tangible solution, um, even Chancellor Merkel is now playing with ProGlove. Um, so that's, that is what we do. Um, now I want to talk about how we do it. Um, and the most interesting thing here is, if you think about Industry 4.0 or smart factories, most of the time you think about machines. Um, but actually we think it's not about machines, it's about humans. So there is this, this fiction that in five to ten years uh, we have no workers anymore. Um, that's not going to happen. We will have workers. Um, maybe they will work together with robots, but we will have workers. Um, and this means, uh, compared to the other companies you maybe saw here today, we are not a lot about research. We are not a lot about um, inventing the craziest new technology. We actually use technology um, to help the workers. That's our goal. So we are more a designing and execution company. Um, and I want to talk about the five core values in our organization that actually help us to do this. It's basically the five things I tell a new employee if he starts with us. Um, and five things. So it's about prototyping, pondering time, post-its, um, getting shit done, and humor. And we're going to start with prototypes. So a typical prototype for us looks like that. I know it looks crazy, um, but it's basically just we ordered some parts from the internet, we soldered it together, we glued it on a glove. It's a fully functional prototype. It works. Um, the thing about prototyping is, in a meeting, theoretically, everything seems possible. You only um, get to the challenges of a product if you really build it, if you start building it at first day. So uh, we have a rule, if you have an idea, build a prototype, otherwise it's not an idea. Um, the problem with prototypes like this is you can't go to a customer with this. They think you're crazy. So to a customer, you go with something like this. Um, that's actually our first design prototype. It's basically the fanciest looking glove we found um, in the do-it-yourself store around the corner, and we glued an iPod on that. Um, and on that iPod, we just run some, ran some graphics. With that, you can go to BMW and show them, hey, here, that's what we want to do. What do you think? So the, the second part of our prototyping is actually getting feedback. Um, so if you and your organizations haven't started prototyping, do prototyping as early as possible and as easy as possible. Um, second thing is about pondering time. Uh, we think that creativity is most of the time the best solution. So to get to the best solution, you need time. Um, if normal, if you get a task, you have this uncomfort in you to solve this task. So what you do is actually, if you have an idea, you take that idea and solve, that, and solve it. So you don't have that uncomfort anymore. What we say is basically, hold on. Think about it, get perspective. Hold on to this uncomfort, because at the end, you will get to a better solution. So we decide stuff at the end. Um, the most asked question at our comp company is actually, when do we have to decide that? And we will not decide that one hour before that when. Um, Story behind that, that's again Paul, and that's actually one of our demos at the Intel competition. Um, the Intel competition was, well, was a huge stage, there were 100 people there, um, live uh, in the internet, and they wanted us to rehearse one day before that. So um, we actually did go to the rehearsal and we had a discussion on stage. Intel expected us to have a, actually a presentation, but we didn't have a presentation because we were deciding what we are going to do. So they were really mad at us um, because they thought we would embarrass them the next day, but we were just holding through, through this uncomfort and they didn't want, didn't want it to be pressured into a decision of what we do there. Um, the next day, we had a great presentation. We won $250,000. Um, so next time, if you have this uncomfort to solve something, don't chicken out of this uncomfort and don't let anybody pressure you into a decision. Think about when do you have to make this decision and then really do it. Um, third thing is about post-it notes. In our office, it basically looks like this. Post-it notes are the greatest invention ever. Because, for the one hand, you can take information, you make information tangible, 
and bring it somewhere else to another group of information. You can really work with information. That's a great thing. The other thing is about focus. Um, if you have a discussion and you need to write down this discussion on a post-it, you only have this tiny space. So you have to think about what, what did we really say? What was the key point? So you are forced to be focused on post-its. And um, third point is, we as humans are actually, um, we are used to process a lot of information every day. Um, if you go over the street, you're processing 1,000 uh, thousands of information. But then when you work, you only have this little screen of a notebook. Why should you? So that's why we actually work like that. We bring information on walls and then work with the information. So we can really work with hundreds of information at the same time. So if you haven't started working with Post-it, start now. Um, the fourth thing is getting shit done. And that's maybe the sharpest weapon you have as a startup. Because compared to bigger companies, um, you are most of the times you are not smarter than them, you don't have the better ideas than them, you are just faster. Um, because at, at big companies, there are really smart people working there, they're just blocked by their big organizations. Um, again, a little story for that. That's, again, Paul testing something, and as you see in this picture, nobody is happy there. Um, because the prototype actually didn't work. So we had a big day there, we wanted to test our prototypes at BMW, um, nothing works. Um, in the middle of the day, we actually find out, okay, there's a problem with the BMW IT, and they say to us, okay, uh, our IT guys are looking into that, they need three to six months to solve that, please come back in three to six months. As a startup, you don't have three to six months. Um, so we actually looked into the problem, we sat down, we worked the whole night, we had a solution the next day. Um, so the next day we had a big demonstration actually in front of a board member of BMW um, and it worked out just because we just did it. Um, actually Paul did it and it, he basically fell asleep during the presentation the next day. But yeah, you can deal with that. So the biggest, the sharpest weapon you have actually as a startup is speed. So don't lose that in the process. So speed is very important. Um, and actually the last thing about our culture is humor. Why is humor um, important? First I want to show you that picture. That's me, I'm very happy there. Um, that's actually a gift from my employees. They made me a sweater out of old gloves. Um, I think it looks a bit like Game of Thrones. In my mind at least. Um, so humor is important because of openness. Um, what you have as a founder is basically, basically you have no clue, clue because you're doing stuff for the first time. Um, so I need actually the smartest employees that tell me, hey Thomas, what you wanted to do is a stupid idea, please don't do it. Um, so to get to this openness, you actually um, need the people to get from the closed mode to the open mode. And the, the easiest way to get people open is actually humor. That's why we, why we do it. And I want to share a little game, um, actually. We play at ProGlove, and that's what we do is we take big quotes from human history and make them about ProGlove. Um, and as you maybe heard, we are, we are talking a lot about scanning. So one example there is Neil Armstrong. That's one small scan for man, one giant scan for mankind. Um, Actually, that, so one of the employees said that when we had our first prototype. Also, very popular are movie quotes. So you all know Forrest Gump. My mama always said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to scan. <laughs> um, and the last one is actually because my favorites are always the political ones, and I will really miss this guy. Barack Obama, yes, we scan. <laughs> okay, so it's about humor. So that's basically what I wanted to present to you today. So um, I talked about what we do, so we're making smart glass, and I talked about how we do it. Um, but the one big takeaway you should actually have from this um, presentation is, if you think about smart factories, and if you think about um, Industry 4.0, it's not about machines, it's about humans. Humans will be the center of our next industrial revolution. Thank you. <laughs>